hello everybody i'm going to give you the breakdown so thanksgiving got canceled for me turns out my parents both came down with covid um my kid was sick either with covid or the flu my uncle um, up in san francisco was sick and so he didn't come down and my sister and her husband were both sick so that pretty much left me and um i don't know like i didn't know what to do so um a few of the people in the building who didn't have anything to do decided the night before thanksgiving um that we would like throw together some type of thanksgiving and it was um we instacarted a bunch of shit like it like fucking super late on Wednesday night. And um let's see, what did we end up getting? We ended up getting um stuffing, mashed potatoes, and again, this is all like crap box stuff because like we weren't gonna take any chances. Um and uh we couldn't get turkey or ham anywhere, so we went with steak and got these giant-ass steaks for, like, almost nothing, which was actually kind of cool. Um, they were good as shit. But back to everything else we got, we ended up couldn't get any pumpkin pie, couldn't get any apple pie, like, nothing like that. So we ended up getting a fucking peach pecan. And then we got this fucking oat milk fucking uh, maple pecan ice cream. Oh my fucking God. The two of those things together was fucking amazing. I'll just say that. But anyway, we also couldn't decide what time we were going to eat. So what we decided to do was start early. This is hysterical. And it was based on the amount of stuff we could get. So the things we got the most of were um, instant mashed potatoes and stuffing. So what we did was had stuffing and mashed potatoes for breakfast around the time lunch rolled around one of them made a, a green bean casserole and so we had that with mashed potatoes and stuffing and then by the time dinner rolled around we added the steak and then like at 11.30 or midnight we had pie and ice cream but uh, I drank so many fucking Bloody Marys yesterday and ate so much fucking food that I feel like shit today. Like, honest to God, I, I'm fucking... I just feel so full. Like, I don't know when the last time I ate that much food was. That was fucking crazy. Is this fucking Santa Monica? Somebody tell me. Come on, sign. I need to know, is this Santa Monica? Yes. Okay. So anyway. So, all that shit went down. And then last night I had a dream. And the dream I had was so fucking vivid and surreal that I woke up thinking that it had to already be a story or a movie or something because it was so real. But in me trying to think about it, I realized that if I wanted to tell this story, the only way I think I'd be able to do it is if it were a film. So this is the first time in fucking years that I've had a new idea 
for a fucking film. Um, it, it's been fucking forever. So now I'm driving to Hollywood to um, have a brunch with a producer friend of mine who's interested to hear what I have to say. So we'll see how that goes. Should be interesting. shave some of my beards down because it's fucking out of control. I wanted a haircut, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get to go get one anytime this week. So I figured I would just give myself a cut. Let's do this and I'll show you how to fucking do this because we want to have it come down into a spike. So let's see. This is what we call riveting content. How's that looking? It's still pretty big on this side because this is where my cowlick is. So I just have to cut it a little shorter on this side. And my mustache is getting long. And normally I would do this with the scissors, but well, we're gonna do it like this. Because if you go like that, or take scissors to it, like that, you have a line in it, it looks stupid. So you gotta kinda just go up a little bit. All right, there we go. To make it look natural. Um, I have no idea if that's okay, but it looks cleaner. So that will hold until I go to a baba, an Alibaba. So the beard is looking good. Did the hair a little bit. I need to cut the sides. Yeah, everything's looking okay. So I figured, um, I would make a Bloody Mary, show you how to do it. So this is the most basic, basic ass Bloody Mary in the world, okay? So here we go. We got our glass that still looks a bit all better. So now I'm gonna throw some ice into the mix. Ice in the glass. Vodka out of the freezer so it's cold. I do about that much. It actually looks kind of like a lot. Probably is. I'm supposed to do about an ounce. Now, typically what you do is you take your Worcestershire sauce and you're supposed to do like four dashes of this. I usually do six to eight. Then your Tabasco, you're supposed to do two. 
I usually do six. Oh my god, my mouth's watering right now. Okay. Um, so now we will go straight for pepper. You can put salt, you're supposed to put salt in it, a couple dashes. I do a couple spins of that. Um, I don't always put salt in it. You can put some tahini in here now if you want. That's good. Um, and then if you just have tomato juice, it's fine. But Mr. and Mrs. T's is probably the best pre-made mix. You still have to doctor it a little bit like I just did. But um, it's really thick, so I just put about that much in. So I'll show you in a second here. <clears throat> I don't like my shit super, super thick. Okay, and I'm just gonna fill the rest up with water. And then give it a little stir. <sighs> I don't have any fucking stir sticks. I do. So stir that up a little bit and cheers. That is the super basic. Like you could do, add some lime, some lemon, some olive juice. Um, you could throw olives in here, beef jerky in here, bacon in here, sausage in here. Um, Fuck, you can put anything in it. But this is just my super fast Bloody Mary. All right. So we're going to talk now. It seems for a long time I thought when making vlogs that the thing people like more than anything is seeing you out and about doing stuff. But it turns out the thing that people comment on the most is when I have these little heart to hearts. So that's what we're going to do. And I don't know exactly what I'm going to say right now, although I know the topic that I'm going to be talking about. And it's going to be really difficult for some people to hear. So as far as trigger warnings go, if any of you don't want to hear anything about relationships, then now might be the time to skip ahead until you see a different background. Now watch, I go change the background just to be a dick. Okay, here's the thing. I don't know, for those of you who are into like astrology and woo and all that shit, I don't know if it's a time of year thing or what, but it seems that a lot of people are kind of going through some shit right now. And I'm not necessarily going through the same thing by any means, but I am going through something, you know, that's a little on the... on the spectrum, let's say. It's not a relationship, but um, a friendship kind of thing. So we can talk about that. But basically, here's the deal. When you love somebody, okay, it's really easy to turn that love into a sense of ownership. Whereas, because you love somebody, the thought of that person spending time with anybody else, like, will make you upset, make you feel wronged, make you feel cheated, you know? And depending on what things are set up in your relationship, um, because of words chosen and words that were agreed on, that might make perfect sense to you. 
for you to feel justified in feeling that way. But as someone who have seen many people come and go and being romantic or being friends or even business partners like work associates, there's something that we all need to understand. And that is this ridiculous idea that people need to fight for people. Whereas if someone you're with or a friend of yours or whatever is spending time with other people and that's pissing you off, you feel like you need to do something out of the ordinary to keep that person, okay? We are not prison wardens. Love should mean that you want whatever makes the other person happy. It means you should want that person to succeed, to move on to bigger and better things if you are not that person, okay? The other thing with this that makes it tricky is this idea that people, whether it's relationships or friendships, have to grow at the same time. And that's just not the case. That's not human nature. Some people will grow like emotionally, creatively, um, financially at different speeds than the person they're with. And that creates friction. And one of the reasons why people are stagnant in their financial situation, let's say, is because when you see your partner succeeding or your friend succeeding, you get fucking mad at them. You get pissed off at them. Or you guys start fighting about it. Or, on the other hand, the person who's doing better starts getting on your case for not doing as well. Okay? All this does is create strife. And it will eventually, if the person stays around, will end up creating that person like a glass ceiling that they will not be able to get by because in order for them to strive and achieve stuff, they will need to cut the baggage. And that's where we come to the word compromise, which is a fucking ridiculous term. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if you really care about somebody if you really love that person, let them go. Let them do the thing that will make them happy. Why is it that we insist on holding people down? People are not possessions. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, this is kind of lofty, probably, but... Um, it's just one of those things, you know, people put way too much into what relationships really are and fucking pop music and Disney has done us no favors into what a relationship is supposed to be. We love our little romantic love stories, you know, but we love those things because we know that how they work is impossible. It is not something that is uh, feasible, which is why it's a fantasy, why it's fiction, you know, or else like love stories would be called um, nonfiction truths. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to solve your life in 30 minutes, or if you're listening to music, two and a half minutes. Just life does not work that way. And so many people have these fucking notions from Hollywood that this is how life is supposed to be. And it's not. It never was supposed to be like that. We just somewhere along the line got fucked thinking that that's what it was supposed to be. A lot of the old timey religious folks would say, well, if the woman knew her place, we wouldn't be having this problem in the first place. And that's a fucking stupid fucking argument. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. 
Because then you are a fucking prison warden and your woman is your property. And that's not fucking life, dude. But I bet you there's tons of fucking dudes out there who are pissed as shit that they were born in this period. They would much rather be back in the 30s and 40s where they can just, like, point to stuff and tell their wife to fucking mop it up or something. That's not real life, dude. I don't know. I've seen a lot of miserable people who built their lives on compromise. And, you know, I guess... Let me take that back. I have seen a lot of miserable people who built their lives on compromise, but those people are also very codependent. And so if they didn't have that person that they were dependent on, they would probably be just as fucking miserable. So um, the exchange there is compromise for um, freedom from loneliness, I guess. So whatever. But hey, this is uplifting shit, am I right? Hey, I just wanted to say too that I am not taking a shit on um, like the family unit. Like that's not at all what I'm fucking trying to do here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to take a shit on the family unit. Like family is great to have if you have a family. Um, but it, but it's always changing. It's ever changing. Families grow and shrink all the time, you know. And again, that's just a natural part of life. It's not the most fun thing to hear about, but you know, it is what it is. So as far as uh, poeting and publishing and stuff like that, let's talk a little bit about um, what's coming up. So for the anarchy crew out there and people who um, had stuff sent in for Poetic Anarchy Volume 3, that is locked. You cannot make any changes anymore. The book is the book and the book is going to come out as is. Um, spent a lot of time um, waiting on a couple people, having them make up their minds what they wanted in the book and what they didn't want in the book and what they felt comfortable sharing in the book and what they didn't feel comfortable sharing in the book. Um, I'm not ever going to wait that long for anybody again. I think from now on, whatever gets accepted is going to be accepted and that's it. So... Um, just make sure when you submit that the stuff you want to submit is the stuff you want in the book. And then we had this huge fucking issue with the cover, which is still not a hundred percent resolved. I'm still trying to, um, kind of bang that out myself, but it's, uh, it's not my strong suit. I will say, as you can see, from Poetic Energy Volume 2 being off-center a little bit. Might actually change that. Or I might not. I don't fucking know. Um, but yeah, in Poetic Energy Volume 4, I'm going to start collecting um, the poems for next month. And if you're in the Energy crew, the last live stream I did, I already talked about how that's going to go. So just watch the last live stream. I'm sure I'll do another video about it. Oh, the big Black Friday sale is going through the end of November on my Etsy shop. Um, so that's kind of cool. That's been going well. So um, if you are into that, do that thing. The podcast is going good, but I've realized that I need better equipment for podcasting. If I'm doing it by myself, the sound is fine. I don't mind the sound. But when I'm interviewing people, um, I don't know if it's a Zoom thing or what, but the sound is just fucking awful. I absolutely hate it. So, uh, yeah. So that's that. Um, submissions are open for Blood Rag 6. So get on that. 14 lines or less. And, um, oh yeah, I'm putting together my poetry book, my big poetry book that's coming out next year. 
and I'm not having a hard time with it, let's say, but I feel like I'm having a hard time with it. So I have to decide what I really want in it um, and do that because I feel like I've went too long and I have way too much stuff now. And going through it is kind of a chore in the sense that there's just a lot to choose from. And I'm like, it's easier when I put together uh, like big paperbacks of collected chapbooks because putting the chapbooks together is relatively easy but when you're going from like 32 pages to 302 pages it, it's kind of it's kind of a, a tricky thing there but anyway i'm just looking forward to next year i have a ton of stuff planned for next year and as far as like publishing goes I'm just trying to get through this year because December is um, inevitably my biggest month of the year um, also with the first two weeks of January um, those are really good too but um, December is really big so um, fingers crossed that that trend continues fuck it's been the trend since 2013 so Let's see how it goes. This has been a very stressful week. A lot of my family is sick. Some of my family has COVID. Here's to hoping next week's a great week. Bang. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.